action. It, like you just throw this democ in the air and just shoot it with a cannon. God, it was so awesome. It was so awesome. I was like riding Nancy Pelosi talking about how wonderful she is. And oh, I was like, that's my goat. That's my goat, dude. <laughs> like we're going to make our country great again. Donald Trump hammering Kamala Harris Kamala. on the economy while holding a rally in Battleground, Michigan. Hello, everyone. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. What's going on? Hey. And I'm still Judge Jeanine Pirro, along with Jessica Tarloff, Jesse Waters, Dana Perino, and dancing Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. No more hiding for the most radical left-wing ticket in history. Vice President Kamala Harris and her running mate, Tim Walz, sitting down this afternoon for a taped CNN interview. At long last, she finally answered for why she's flip-flopped on so many issues. Watch this. The worst part about it is these assholes are going to keep calling her a communist, radical, whatever, while she tries to desperately retriangulate to the center. All it ends up doing is lose progressive voters and other voters that would literally hear what the campaign has to promise them and potentially go out to vote for them. No one is like, man, I'm really voting for the Democrat, a real person. How should voters look at some of the changes that you've made, uh, that you've explained some of here uh, in your policy? Should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your po my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. You mentioned the Green New Deal. I have always believed and I have worked on it that the climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to we did bringing her emotional. Here's what he told the Daily Mail. With her vice president sitting there, so she's not sure that she can't answer. Should you answer it? Sitting with her to help her. This is not the kind of a person we need as president. All right, Jesse, I'm going to start with you. It seems that her answer to is going to be, my values haven't changed. But does that explain her position in 2019 when she was running for president and all of the things she did as vice president? They had 30 days to come up with an answer, and they came up with that. <laughs> this is going to be a great campaign. Never been more confident than I am now that Trump's going to win this election. Oh, dude. Okay, it's over. It's over. Trump's losing. Nah. Nah, it's done. Jinxed it. He jinxed it. It's done. Nah. Cursed. Cursed. That's the nail this in the coffin. This is a great example of why she'll never be president. Question. Why are you a flip-flopper? I'm not. He's saying I'm not a flip-flopper. Values have changed? Okay. Wait, what do you, you said have not you wait, what? what wait, wait, wait. Is she hey she is? Like, I'm so confused. Like, yeah, I am a flip flip flopper. I love flip flopping. Wow, she's gonna lose the election because she didn't immediately admit to being a flip flopper. This is sound political commentary, okay? Okay. You say in twenty changed. years okay. you said in twenty years you can't get a new car that's a gas power car. And now you say, No, actually that's not true at all. And then in her answer, she says, Yeah, we're gonna have deadlines. Yep. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. And when you listen to her, it's just all like kind of vague gobbledygook. Like it just washes over you. Like, what is, what is she talking about? She doesn't really like bring you in. Okay, so your values haven't cheated people for crime. And when you were the border czar, you were literally flying people across. And now you want to build a wall? But your values haven't changed. <laughs> that makes any sense. And Steve show last night and he said, they basically not. I mean, yeah, Harris has went back and forth on the way she's communicated about. But of course, when you listen to Jess and you're just like objectively living in an alternative reality, he's like, remember when Kamala Harris flew migrant to Guatemala to be like, don't come here. <laughs> OK, I disagree with her on that. But like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember when Jesse Waterscream just lose one election? JFK was down. These people came back and won. I've come back and won. The red wave never happened. I would just throw that right in their face, and then I would stop criticizing Democrats, because that's what the Democrats are getting mad at, is Joe's just criticizing them. And he needs to make this about Trump again. He said, I beat him once, and we're running to receive, and you guys want to rip away millions of people who voted for me. You can't just change the rules in the middle of an election and just say, oh, you know what, it's probably going to lose. The polls are bad. Let's the ticket. <laughs> when has that ever happened before? It, before and just because a candidate is down in the polls, when he's, he's not ripping them off this because. Oh, man. If only we could go back to like 
of his mental state, I think he's going to lose. They're only going to get in for four more years, and then you guys will get back with Gavin. It's like lose an election. It's like you just throw this democ in the air and just shoot it with a cannon. God, it was so awesome. It was so awesome. I was like riding Nancy Pelosi talking about how wonderful she is. And she oh, I was like, that's my goat. That's my goat, dude. I was talking about how I'm going to write Nancy Pelosi in. Yeah. For Comrade Pelosi. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Before he got kicked out of the DNC, even before the DNC stuff, I was already like frustrated uh, with, with the way that the Dems were communicating certain things. And even before then, I also personally said, if you no longer want to uh, see those ads at the top of the hour, all you need to tell people, uh, I'm always like, yo, don't ever vote, dude. Don't vote. Do not vote. I'm like Kamala Harris in Guatemala. This is a three-minute ad break now. Go wake Nancy up. We still need her. What do you mean? Nancy literally has been talking about how Kamala Harris should be more moderate in her messaging. It's Jover. Nancy Pelosi straight up said Kamala Harris should be more moderate in her messaging. Like the other day. We're back. You know, we're back to regular old boilerplate Democratic Party wants to lose or at the very, at the very least, like win by like the slimmest majority. Nominated someone, a Democrat, who's afraid to go on a CNN interview you can walk around dc and just bump into people dying to do a cnn hit but they found the one person afraid to do cnn and now you know why she's afraid because she knows she's not up to the job she doesn't want the job she doesn't understand the issues she doesn't know where she stands on the issues and she's like john Kerry. remember the john Kerry? i voted for it before i was against it same thing with her she's just not authentic and that politically is the you know dana john Kerry, when he said i voted for it before i was against it he starts to give you an explanation mm -hmm. she doesn't explain anything the yeah. fact that she's co-sponsored the bill that says we want a mandate that you have to get an ev car and and all the things with the inflation reduction act the impact on inflation that john Kerry thing campaign and he was just watching his job as a junior bird man was to sit there and watch doing. It wasn't like he did this and did an interview. He just happened to say in a town hall, yeah, I voted for it before I voted against it. Oh, and he was like, oh, wait, that could be something. And that's what turned the whole campaign around. So wow. moments like this is when the campaign gets harder. So she's had a really great 40 days. And I think that CNN, I would imagine, gave the best clip for the, pro the promo, right? So we get that at 4 o'clock. I mean, I don't imagine that they have a lot of a more great material that they're going to hold on to to try to get everybody to watch at nine o'clock. Maybe they do, but uh, I kind of doubt it. Um, she has a multiple choice question and she still doesn't answer that. Then she has to get into the world word salad of the how do you diagram the sentence of basically in measures in time. Right. Mm -hmm. she, she goes back to that. That is, is her go to. Um, it literally means nothing. Plus, she says, my values have not changed. Well, if that's the case, then why in practice did everything change? Mm -hmm. In practice, you, you, like, and, and your values are that you wanted to prosecute criminals. In practice, the Biden administration let all these people come across. And they're not putting any pressure on the DAs across the country in order to hold anybody to account. The last thing I would say is in the interview, she basically admits that Green. there was a back door to get the Green New Deal done. Mm -hmm. And what did the Green New Deal do? It goosed all the prices. Crime is not a salient issue. Americans literally favor Kamala over Trump on crime. You're an idiot. Oh, what about these progressive DAs? Like, shut the f up, idiot. You don't know what the f you're talking about. Put all this money into the economy, which helped fuel inflation, which is why the Inflation Reduction Act is a problem. It's really easy to Monday morning quarterback, whatever today We've is. Never Thursday had a Green morning New Deal. Quarterback, um, a communications decision. But if you have to agonize this much, to do one interview so that it becomes like the state of the union address and we're yeah. all like waiting on pins and needles and they're gonna send out excerpts beforehand. I do think you have a problem. The other thing is, you know, tonight is the opening night of college football. Who's gonna watch? Well, you know, right, Jessica, Jessica, what Dana is saying is true. Like in practice, um, she not only allowed that border are. to open up, but she was responsible for uh, getting millions to the Minnesota bail fund. So she can say my my values have changed, but everything that she has done affirmatively, whether it's the Inflation Reduction Act or allowing the border to stay open, and you know, uh, with fracking and saying all these things, everything is contrary to what she now wants us 
to believe. And by the way, if she's breaking the glass ceiling and she's really close because she's a vice president now, why does she need the crutch? Why does she need walls there when it's her inconsistencies that we care about, not his? On other, to seem to care a lot about walls is in. So well, I don't think that's we're really talking fair. about walls, talking about. Get him, Jessica. Nerds in chat shocked to find out football is more popular than an interview with someone no one likes. Wait, I mean, yeah, it's good for me, though. I like it. Get him, Jessica Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov. Get him. About Kamala. Well, that is the but ticket. But now we're talking and about Kamala. Seeing, and you're seeing the ticket in full. I, I think it's important to watch the entire interview before we totally malign her for not answering this properly. Or The EV mandate has been so infuriating. I literally lose my mind every time a Republican talks about it. It's just completely made up. There's no mandate. There's no deadline when everyone's forced to buy an EV. It's literally just cafe fuel economy standards that have been around since 1975. Shut up, liberal. You, I bet you want to jerk me off when I eat a burger, too. Okay? Want to jerk me off until I got no cummies left. Okay? No more burgers. No more burgers! They're saying it! Shut the hell up, lip dart! We're not touching that. Own. I think the answer was actually reflective of a lot of conversations that we've been having here on The Five about just owning up to an evolution in it. And you can still say, my values are the same, especially when you're talking about an issue like health care or protecting the climate, but also being realistic about what you can get enacted. I mean, you can't just walk in and pass whatever you want. You have to work with people. You have to work across the aisle. They did their best at doing that. Um, so I, I think people are just going to have to watch it and decide for themselves. But I will say that, you know, watching a little bit of Trump today, listening to his allies, J.D. Vance was out there being booed by a bunch of firefighters yeah, earlier this afternoon. round of applause. Slash half the audience hated no, him. No, no, it was but in Boston. But anyway, the attacks. It was in what, Boston. What That's a deep, deep Democrat city, and he got overwhelmingly brave, brave. allowed. Oh wow, wow. Um, no, no, he got applause, dude. I promise. Please, please don't check the tape where they kept booing him from the start of his speech to the very end. J.D. Vance, I think his approval is like negative 17. Anyway, the point is oh. that the attacks on Kamala, that she's not very smart, she's not a smart person, Trump is saying that, that she's a DEI hire, are not landing. It just isn't working. And I, I don't know, Jesse, if you stayed around to watch Brett Baer, the top of his show, but he had all the polls, right, where they're showing the direct opposite of what you said. So, so glad he, you brought that I up. I am glad you brought that because up I myself. Because happen, I happen to bring something. Okay, this well, is, you, No, this is Nate Silver. It's in the No, I, I know who and Nate that, Silver is. Good, so I don't need to remind you. I'll just tell the audience he's their go-to guy on the left for what? polls. 52% chance Trump wins. Okay. Okay. What is and what could now in his four or five points. Upon this, I own polls. Kamala hits fifty percent in Georgia, Arizona, one in North Carolina. You know, no, no, no. This it, is important it, because this is actually the measure of where the what we're talking about doesn't matter as much as how people are going to what vote. What the Democratic measure of the race is, is, is what happens on election day right now. Right. And I'm telling you, if the election is, was held today, right. okay, that but Kamala. That's not, but mm -hmm. look, I asked a question that was not there. Bro, bro, bro. It's so funny watching them flail around and be like, ah, the polls are, ah, well, what matters is, you know what the real poll that matters? It's one where you go and vote, okay? In November, that's the only poll that matters. Oh, okay, that, I guess there's no reason to talk about polls then. Let's just keep throwing vibes out there. That, and let me go to you, Greg, at this point. They're saying, you know, that, uh, you know, she's more than a DEI hire. She's this brilliant person. Have you ever heard Kamala Harris give a serious interview? Well, I was uh, touched by something no one brought up. Uh, she says that they held themselves to deadlines around time. Yeah, because there's nothing I hate more than deadlines that are untethered to time. You know, a deadline that is not connected to time, it's not a deadline. <laughs> They call it a deadline because it is attached to time. There was no joy there. That How can you? Oh, my God. He looks so much worse with the button all the way buttoned down. I don't know why. Like, the likelihood that you have to hide your drink around butt felt goes up unimaginably when you see him without the buttons buttoned up. What Greg did right there is a perfect demonstration of how rizzless these guys are. Because, like, he's right. She's doing word salad, but like he literally flubbed it. Like you could have been like, this is another Kamala Harris word salad moment. She's talking about deadlines and then describing what a deadline is. We know what it is. It's not that ultimately it doesn't really matter and just like move on. But he's like, oh my God, a deadline with a time frame. I love time frames on deadlines without time frames. It's like, why? What are you saying? You're doing the same she was doing now, where it seems like you're just you know, 
trying to run out the clock. Just could get a couple words in. They're mocking like three words she said at the end of a perfectly cogent answer. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, yeah, I, I think Kamala Harris is uh, not particularly charismatic. She's a generic Democrat, yada, yada, yada. And uh, she carries herself a certain way in unscripted conversations. But like, this is not all that bad of a response. And you're failing to even make a good enough joke about her doing word salad, which she regularly does. That's what I noticed. Yeah. I mean, I, I found that she looked miserable. I think there was a lot of anxiety emanating from her. I think that's because of, like you said, all the pressure that has been placed on her. An 18 minute interview divided by two, because it was Waltz, nine minutes. He subtracted it's questions. Crazy. It's left five minutes. That's enough room for maybe one of Kamala's sentences, right? Talk about a controlled burn. You know, they, they had to localize this sucker. But then, you know, we, we haven't touched on Waltz, and I think he had a really tough role because he had to know his place. He had to be there when necessary, but not steal the spotlight. We call it the reverse Jesse at Fox, <laughs> you know, who intrudes when not needed in Hogs' stage. The thing is, though, the key for Waltz, he, he couldn't help her. You can't mansplain. Dana, do you know what mansplaining is? Could so it's, it's when a man... And, okay, explain something uh, typically to a woman such mm -hmm. as yourself in a manner that's kind of regarded as condescending or patronizing. It's like talking down to a woman, something I would never do to you, little lady, <laughs> unless, you can, unless you're confused about complicated things like math or economics. But I would never do that to you. There's only one way that Harris can win, and it has nothing to do with in Late night, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Buttfeld. That's the joke, chat. Yeah, he's mansplaining, mansplaining. That's the joke that he's trying to make. God damn, he is so unlikable. King of late night. King of late night. King of late night. It's like, bro, the, the male flock, the male talent at... Like, Greg, I'm partial to. I don't hate him as much as I hate Jesse Waters. But it's wild that all the editorial team men post Tucker Carlson has become just like... I guess Sean Hannity still is the number one brown noser, so he's got like that Fred Flintstone, you know, maybe high school quarterback vibes to him. Like a guy who definitely peaked in high school. But these two guys are so, like, it feels like they're competing on who has the more date rapist vibes. I feel kind of bad saying that about Greg, but I, it's just the button. Like the unbuttoned look is just, it, it's giving cover your drink, you know? Jesse Waters, I'll say that about on a daily basis, like on, on a good day, he's still, you know, it's kind of crazy. Her, It's the media's responsibility to sustain the same amount of ecstatic coverage they created. The Actually, I'll elevate Jesse Waters from date rapist to just rapist uh, with his recent takes on uh, Kamala Harris having like the generals having their way with uh, Kamala Harris. Like he's been elevated in status. Not that it matters before chatters go, what is the difference? Like the, a date rapist is still a rapist is like, no, he's like, he's like minivan, white minivan driving around town, trying to, you know, stalk someone to kidnap them level of rapist, like Boston strangler level, just a horrifying aura last month for 68 more days and they can do it i mean they lied about they lied about biden for what three and a half years with no fatigue but if this elevated artificial joy dips she's dust they can't let reality intrude it's like one of those marathon dance contests the media's got to keep their dance partner propped up all the way to november 5th or the charity loses click here to subscribe to the